it's Friday. You're sitting at your desk. You get a phone call from your daughter's best friend, Pam. Mom, you need to get to the hospital right away. Sammy's having trouble breathing. Sammy is your three and a half month old granddaughter. You get to the hospital as fast as you safely legally can. Maybe not quite legally, but you get there. And what do you see? You see your daughter looking at the operating table, being held back by her husband. And there on the operating table is your granddaughter. She's dead. You know she's dead because her body's pink. Her fingers are blue. Her toes are blue. The nurse says, what do you expect when you bring me a dead baby? I can't bring her back to life. You think, this is the worst day of my life. And then you realize, no, it's not. The worst day of my life is when my daughter and her husband make a decision to hold hands and jump off a cliff. They didn't do it. Thank God he called his mother. His mother called me. Where do you go from here? How do you move on from something like this? Ironically enough, when I was in my 20s, I was looking for things, principles to guide my life. And one of the principles that I found that has had a major effect on the rest of my life was a letter that Albert Einstein wrote to his friend Robert Marcus upon the death of Robert's son from polio at the age of two. It said, Dear Mr. Marcus, a human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings, as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. The striving to free oneself from this delusion is the one issue of true religion, not to nourish the delusion, but to try to overcome it, is the way to reach the attainable measure of peace of mind. With all my best wishes, sincerely yours, Albert Einstein, February 12, 1950. I thought about this long and hard, and I realized that we are much like a target, and our relationship to the universe is much like we are the bullseye and to the most extent, we really only think about ourselves, really. And maybe the next ring of the target, which is our family and close friends. What Dr. Einstein was saying was, we need to move beyond this perception of ourself as being the sole center of the universe and move to a point where we recognize that there's another ring outside the family and friends and that is our community and our state and our nation and the world and the universe and all that supports it. I spoke with my daughter many times and eventually she and her husband after experiencing this grief decided that they would move on from their grief they became extremely active in a group called SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome Supporters, and worked with other people experiencing the same kind of loss for the next three or four years. That is, until such time as they had a couple more children and got so busy with their new life that they didn't really have time to continue helping other people get over their grief. It's something that I don't really recommend, but if you're sitting at your desk and you have this 
immeasurable realization that today is going to be the worst day of your life. You can also come to the realization that you may take this experience and make something of it. You can move on from this into where you're making a bigger difference in the world. I hope you never see that day, but if you do, I hope you will remember this. Just look up Albert Einstein, Robert Marcus, and you'll get a copy of this quote. And with that, I challenge you to make the best of moving out towards the limits of your universe.